Okay, let's start off nice and easy. So suppose you have a triangle uh, on a grid and the teacher asks you to enlarge it by a scale factor of two. Now that simply means every length on the triangle becomes twice as long. So if one side was three units, it becomes six. If another side was five units, then it becomes 10. The shape looks the same, but it's just bigger. Now imagine a rectangle, two units by four units. So if you enlarge that by a scale factor of three, it becomes six units by 12 units. Now notice how the proportions stay the same. The length is still twice the width. And this is why enlargement is powerful. The shape's geometry is preserved. Angles don't change and the shape doesn't become distorted. It's like zooming in on a map. Everything expands equally. But we can also go the other way. A scale factor of less than one shrinks the shape. So let's say we enlarge a square, which is eight by eight, and we do it with the scale factor of half. That will give us a four by four square. We call that a reduction, but mathematically it's still enlargement because the shape is scaled. Now, the important thing is recognizing the multiplier effect. So scale factor two means double it. Scale factor three means triple it. And scale factor half means half it. All of it is still multiplication. So far, so good. Okay, let's move on. So enlargement isn't always this simple. In questions in the test, the scale factor can be any number, even fractions and decimals. So in the next video, we'll explore enlargements with scale factors bigger than one and between zero and one to see what happens when shapes either stretch or shrink in different ways.